Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to our convolution example video. Now in today's video we are going to use the overlap and add method to compute the convolution of h of n and x of n shown here. So before we start there's a few things I'd like to point out to you. Firstly, x of n is an infinite number of inputs, essentially it's simulating something like a microphone. Now you might notice that the values of our x of n and our h of n are all vary between essentially negative 2 and 3. Now that's not a limit of convolution at all, it's just essentially to keep the multiplication nice and easy so we don't make any careless mistakes while we're going through this, uh, and small numbers will get across the point just as easy as the big ones anyway. So, a couple of things we should cover about the overlap and add method before we continue. Firstly, there's a few variables here, n1, which is the number of samples in x of n, which we know is infinite. So we have n1 is equal to infinity here. Secondly, we have n2, which is the number of samples in h of n. We can clearly see that that one's 3, so n2 is equal to 3. Then, you essentially get to pick the value for n3. A typical rule of thumb is it should be approximately equal to that of n2. So we are going to choose a value of 6 which is approximately equal to 3. Essentially anything in the neighborhood will work. And then we're choosing that just because it makes the convolution number nice. So next is the number of convolution points in our convolution. And that can be given by n2 plus n3 minus 1. Now this will always be the same and it's derived from the convolution equation itself. Uh, a very similar equation is drawn from the correlation and we talked through that a bit in the correlation video so I'd urge you to go back and have a look at that one. Lastly, we need to calculate the overlap. As we're calculating a convolution of an infinite number of samples, we have to divide this signal into discrete chunks. So in this case, our n3 is the number of samples in the chunks that we create. So from the 2 all the way to the 0. Now, if you imagine convolution as taking our h of n and sliding it across our x of n and then multiplying and adding them all as we're going to do here, you can hopefully see that the end of this x of n sample would overlap with the start of this next x of n sample. So because of that, when we're doing our overlap and add method, we have to calculate the amount of overlap between our two signals. So that's always given by n2 minus 1, which is simply 3 minus 1, which is 2. And I'm actually not sure why that 6 is there, so let's just remove that now. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's get started. So we're going to fill our h of n and x1 of n samples in here, and then just as we did with the correlation, we're going to append zeros to the rest of it. In the correlation video, I stated that x of n plus 1 shifts this signal here 1 to the left. I didn't go into why that was, but I think it's important that we do that now. Essentially, when we have x1 of n, this sample right here is x1 of n. This symbol here is n plus 1, n plus 2, etc. So they continue moving on. When we have x1 of n plus 1, it essentially means that our n plus 1 sample, this negative 1 here, would be in the initial position. And then we simply tack on all the values after that, and the 2 would wrap around to the other side. However, in this video, we have negative n. So if you can imagine n plus 1 would shift it 1 to the left, and then taking the negative of that would flip the whole signal. In other words, you would have a shift one to the right. So, hopefully that makes sense. Let's get started. We'll take the negative end of this signal, which is the same as reversing it. And then a small difference between the convolution and the correlation is that we don't take our first output sample from our negative n term. We take it from our negative n plus one. And that will be the same for all of the chunks that we calculate the convolution for. So let's calculate our x of 1, negative n plus 1, which is essentially shifting this signal 1 to the right, and then calculate the output from that. So just as we did with the correlation, we simply multiply down the rows and then add them together. We have 1 times 2, which is 2. Then we have 2 times 0, which is 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. And then the rest of these terms are all 0. So we're just left with 2. So our first output will be a 2. Then we shift the signal again once more to the right, which will give us negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, and 1. And then we repeat the process again. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, which gives us 3. We'll repeat this process for the remainder of the terms, but we might skip ahead because it's mighty boring to watch.
And there we have it. We have our output for the convolution of our x1 term. So now we would repeat this exact same process with our next discrete chunk, which would go from the 1 through to the 3. However, we're not going to go through this now because it's incredibly repetitive and boring. And if you understand how to do this first step, you should be able to repeat it for everything else. So we get on to the overlap and add part of this method. So we can say that the contribution to our y of n by our x1 of n is this signal here. Remember, this is not our x1 term that we're writing out here. It's just the contribution that it makes to our y of n term. So let's populate this array now. We'll have... And then there'll be no overlap between the rest of the terms, so they're all zero. Likewise, we could repeat this process for the x2. However, we start writing the contribution of our x2 signal with an overlap of 2. Therefore, our x2 signal would start here. Now, we haven't calculated the x2 signal, but let's just choose arbitrary values to show how the overlap and add method works. So, we'll have... And then we simply populate the rest of the array with zeros. Notice that there's an overlap of two samples between the two signals, as the last sample of our x1 was a 0, and our first sample of our x2 was a 1. Okay, so then to calculate the output of our convolution here, we simply add down all of the columns to get our output. So that will give us 2, 3, negative 3, 6, 7, 1, and then we add negative 2 and 1, which will give us negative 1, and then the rest of the terms all remain as they are. Now when we get to the last two terms here, we need to be careful because the x3 or the contribution from the x3 samples will overlap with the last two samples of our x2. So for now we can write 1, 2. However, if we were doing this for the entire input signal, this would also be changed. So from that, we have our final convolution from our input signal. Hopefully you can see from this that the method of convolution isn't that difficult, but it can be a bit weird uh, with all the shifting and reversing and everything when you first see it. But essentially every convolution that can be done can be done like this. You can also use the overlap and save method, and if there's any demand for that at all, we can create another video which shows how that works. Lastly, we can show that the convolution of our x1 term was correct by using MATLAB. So here you can see we create our h, our impulse response of 1, 2, negative 1. We have our x of 2, negative 1, 1, 3, and 2. And our output is 2, 3, negative 3, 6, 7, 1, and negative 2, which exactly lines up with what we've got here. 2, 3, negative 3, 6, 7, and we lose our 2 because we have that 1. Okay, guys, so thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, like I said, convolution can be a little bit tricky to get used to at the start, but once you do, it's not that difficult. You probably wouldn't want to do this by hand, just with the correlation. Uh, however, you can implement this in C or Python pretty easily uh, with that much hassle. Uh, if you had any problems at all, feel free to let me know with a comment down below, and I'll get back to you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.